We get it. After you've been in an accident, you deserve clear, risk-free advice to help get you back on your feet. You deserve an advocate. I guess at some point on the program, this we'll is play the, the Monty music. Show, the truth in sports <laughs> talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find the Monty Show. Streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, hey, the Monty Show live on your YouTube machine. A thousand percent is going to be one of those shows. Should I just sing everything? One of those shows, Because it's Friday. <laughs> We're presented by The Advocates. Theadvocates.com, the best injury attorneys in the business. You guys, we are just three days away from their blood drive. Uh, get to redcrossblood.org every two seconds in this country a human being needs blood or plasma and that means they need you we all need to hook it up let's get to the advocates let's donate blood monday one to seven in salt lake city no matter where you are redcrossblood.org use the sponsor code advocates slc we try not to ask you for much on this show even though today is free membership Friday. But anyway, the point is, we try not to ask you for much on this show. Come on, let's go. Get it Do done. it right now. Redcrossblood.org. 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 Do Advocates it. SLC, the best injury attorneys in the business. Giving back to the community as they always do. You guys, they have so much love for all of the communities they work in with their offices in all across the state of Utah, Montana, Boise, Phoenix, Colorado, let's go. Let's go. Maybe it is going to be that kind of show. <laughs> it is free membership Friday, which means today, hit the like button. We get to 100 likes in the next hour. All we're asking you to do, get us to 100 likes in the next hour. We'll oh, give away a okay. $100 Strong Amazon start. gift card. Strong start. Already 14 likes. Yeah, let's go. Already 14 likes two minutes into the show. If we get to 100 likes... Within the next 55 minutes, we'll give away a $100 Amazon gift card. And, by the way, the all-time record for memberships donated during a free membership Friday is, what, 100 and 110 last, 10, last Friday. Was, yeah. Last Friday, we gave away 110 memberships. Let's get crazy. We break the 100 membership mark. We'll give away another $100 Amazon gift card. It's not rocket science. It's just pimps doing what they do, which is giving away Amazon gift cards. Pretty simple. That's all we have to do. Hit the like button. We're at 28. Let's go. We have 72 likes to go on the show within the next 54 minutes. We'll give away a $100 Amazon gift card. Do it. Hook it up. Give away free memberships. Give away gift, gifted memberships right now. Hook it up. Free membership Friday. Hello. How the heck are you guys? Big day in sports. Yes, David Floyd. David Floyd already um, because this is the David Floyd Monty show. Hey, Monty. Let's talk about Texas Tech being better than BYU, and it wasn't even close. BYU was horrendous yesterday. Yeah. But how about my boy? Garbage. How about my guy? Oh, uh, yeah. Well-cooked tortillas. Armando Baycott in North Carolina. Yeah. North Carolina. My guy had a double-double because I didn't pick him in prize picks. <laughs> I picked Kevin Durant, who quite Dude. literally got knuckles deep on me last night. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I got screwed by Kevin We're Durant. Talk about that game. I got over. screwed by Kevin Durant. Yeah. I need to take a pregnancy test yeah, because that was brutal. That was terrible. Is the NBA fixed? Uh, fixed is strong, but I do think there's manipulation that happens. Yes. Uh, that officiating last night. We'll talk about that. Welcome to the nightmare. Good morning, guys. A work from home day so I can finally go, watch baby. live. Work Let's go. Home. How many of us work from home? How, yeah, how many of us are working from home? The Nye guy, let's go. Happy Friday, kings and queens. What's up? UW fan, good morning. Go dogs. Who's first in today? Mountain Mama. Donate blood. <laughs> good morning, Mike Smith. Welcome in. Maury Alvarez, our favorite Floridian. Maury, how are you? Good to see you. OG Gary, meh. It's the G5. Who cares? Yeah, let's get into it as you hit the like button on the Monty Show. Uh, 69 likes to go. That's my favorite hey. number. Hook it up. We have got, what, 52 minutes. 
Make it happen. Get to 100 likes. We'll Do give it. away a $100 Amazon gift card. Let's go. Um, let's talk about this college football playoff meeting today because I do think this is a big deal. Um, the college football playoff management committee will meet today. Um, they will not decide on structure. However, it is widely believed. Uh, Ross Dellinger, Pete Thamel uh, at ESPN, uh, who is an excellent reporter, Pete Thamel, reporting that today they will finalize a financial agreement uh, amongst the uh, members of the college football playoff that will likely see each the Big Ten and the SEC get 30%, up to 30% of the college football playoff pie each. You're looking at the Big 12 and the uh, ACC getting 20-something percent of that pie, a much smaller percentage. And you are looking at the G5 being pushed out of the equation. Do you care? Because when you have a situation, and I think this is almost assured now in college football, that we are heading to a football championship structure that only gives access to the Blue Bloods. And again, I think you know on this show, and I say it every single day, I am a Notre Dame fan. I have always been a Notre Dame fan. I grew up in Chicago, Joe Montana, my God. Notre Dame does not deserve an AQ. And I've tried to find ways to storytell myself. I've tried to find ways to get hallucinogens from Aaron Rodgers. He has not called me back. I cannot find a way to, to explain to you how Notre Dame, and we've reported on this show, and we'll see how it all plays out, but our sources are telling us continually that Notre Dame will get an automatic qualifier as long as they are in the top 14 or 16. And I believe the structure is going to be a 14-team playoff. You are going to have Notre Dame in the college football playoff as long as they are ranked in the top 14 teams. I uh, That spot should not be guaranteed, in my opinion. You're an independent. I, I, I know we've had this conversation. All that does, guaranteeing Notre Dame a spot if they are ranked in the top 14, all that does is push the G5 further and further away from the table. And that's what's going to happen as we begin this process and it starts today when the college football playoff management committee meets. And let's get a couple of things straight right out of the gate. I believe that the G5 is critical because it is, whether you want to call it Cinderella's slipper, it doesn't matter. The story of the little guy, the the, the tiny university, whether that you know is in the NCAA tournament with FAU and San Diego State, whether that is Bless a State or Utah is the original BCS buster. The little guy having a chance, the David knocking off the Goliath is part and parcel of the American dream. And when you push out the G5, you push out the American dream, in my opinion. It is not a matter of money. It is simply a, mat a matter of consciousness. It is simply a mat matter, in my opinion, of, of your responsibility to make sure that college football is a national sport. And maybe I'm taking it too far this morning. I don't know. But what I do know is when you push out the G5, the money doesn't matter. What matters is you are telling people that the 1% is all that matters. And maybe that's the story of our country now. And we always talk about how life and sports run directly next to each other. Well, where else are we watching this play out than pushing out leagues like the Mountain West? Pushing out teams like Fresno State, Boise State. Pushing out teams like San Diego State. It's not the right thing to do. Don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean that that's going to happen because I think what we've seen is money trumps all. Money is your moral compass. Money is the only thing that matters in college football. But Jake, as sure as we sit here, do you believe or do you agree it's the wrong thing to do to push the G5 out of college football? Yeah, I, I think there's no doubt it's the wrong thing to do. I mean, I, I, I think when you look at <clears throat> the experience of the – you know, the student athlete uh, at multiple levels, I think that story goes away if you start pushing out the G5, right? Like, think about how recruiting works. You know, a lot of kids don't just get the, you know, the auto invite to the best school in the country. They've got to go to a G5 or, hell, even a JUCO, and they got to find their way into that that top spot on a, on a, uh, um, a P5 school's roster. And, and I think when you start pushing out the, the G fives, it, 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 it just changes the system. And, and I understand that, 
you know, these smaller schools have no business being on the same football field. And I agree with that. They shouldn't be on the same football field as a power four school. It just, it should not ever happen. However, <clears throat> I do think that there's a lot of value in having the G5 have its own system. Don't push them out and just hang them out to dry and say, yeah, well, too bad. You guys are the G5, so we're not interested. Nobody no, cares. That's not what, and I do agree, most people don't care, but I also agree that that's not what's best for the system. The system needs uh, needs the G5 level schools to have their own college football playoff. They need, the system needs the lower end schools to still be able to compete and still be able to make money because ultimately, you know, we still get the run of the mill. Nobody cares about it. Basketball game. And nobody seems to care about that. You know, in, during tournament season, this time of year, what are we, we, we're all celebrating that no, no school you've never heard of beat UConn or beat UNC. We love that story. So why are we trying to eradicate it from football? Oh, that's right, because we don't get that story in football because football is a super physical sport and you typically don't see upsets. So to me, I don't think we should be eradicating the G5, but what I do think we need to do is have a separation of classes officially on paper that allows the G5 to just play the G5. And hey, if you win a certain amount, then you can get a sniff at the at, at, at another level. Yeah, I think it is it is tragic. I think it's terrible. I think it is it's everything that's wrong with with our our world in in 2024. Like I mean the App State Michigan game, sure it's a regular season game, it's a crazy upset. They but are you telling me that can't happen in November the same way it happens in September? You tell me that can't happen in December the same way it happens in in December. I think it can. And I think the the story of the underdog needs to be told and need at least needs to be given the opportunity to be written. I think what's going to happen today and let's be very clear about this. I don't believe that structure happens today. And I think Ross also, Ross Dellinger who I think is the best college football insider, I do. I think Ross is reporting this as well, that no structure will be determined today. But we've heard pretty routinely, it's going to be a 14-team playoff. And the Big Ten is going to get, I think, the Big Ten and the SEC will get three or four automatic qualifiers, which is bananas to me. Yeah. That's bananas to me. I, I don't know how, again, that 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 to me is surprising. I, I don't know how the the group, approves that type of model in good conscience because you're sitting here you know basically handing the the wolf more sheep to eat yes, at that you point are. like you're you're basically saying hey yeah cool you guys won the most so we're gonna make the path easier for you that i mean that just doesn't make a lot of sense i understand the financials of it hey we win the most we make the most money we should get a bigger piece of the pie okay i'm fine with that honestly i'm fine with that but when you start changing the path to winning a national championship and you start skewing it in favor of the Big Ten and the SEC, I, I again, that's one of those where I'm just like, why are we doing this? What why be like why why would the group approve it? Because ultimately it does take a group to approve it. And at some point, you have to draw a line in the sand when you're dealing with folks like Greg Sankey, right? Or Tony Petiti. Like you have to say to the big boys, like, enough's enough. Like, this is where we're stopping this. And that's just not happening right because now. Because if you go, and I think the number is, I think the number is probably three, what the Big Ten and the SEC will push for. Let's pretend it's 14 teams. That's six, gone. Gone. Almost half. Seven, eight to the Big 12. Nine, ten to the ACC. Now you've got four spots left. Notre Dame. Well, now you've got three spots left. The the highest ranked G5. Now you've got two spots left. And do you really think that Big Ten and the SEC aren't going to push for those spots? Because they're going to. And I, I think that's the thing that should scare you. Is that you should, you should have, in my opinion, I'm happy if, hey, the Big Ten and the SEC, they're going to get two spots anyway. Let's not let's not pull punches. It, it it would be shocking if on a perennial basis, 
two SEC teams and two Big Ten teams were not ranked in the top 14. Yeah. Right. Okay. So give them two. Give two to the Big 12. Give two to the ACC. Right there. What is that? That's eight. Right. Give, I guess, Notre Dame one. That's nine. One to the G5 is 10. At least now you've got four, four spots that are at large. Let the, let the G5 have a shot at that, but you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. You're going to, in my opinion, you're going to have at most two at-large spots. Yeah. And we're going to wind up right back where we are now because isn't that what this does? Mm -hmm. And it puts an emphasis on winning your conference championship, maybe as it should. And if you're in the Big 12, the two teams that make the conference championship game are in, right? If you're in the ACC, the two teams that make the conference championship game are in. Solves the Florida State problem, I guess. I guess. But I, I think the problem is that you know, as much as we're prioritizing winning the conference, we're actually not because if both teams that play in the championship game are getting in, what's the point of playing the game? Like, what are we playing for? Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I think you're the P four are always going to have their spots. They, they, that's just the the reckoning of college football. Yeah. The biggest issue is, I think you need the Big Ten and the SEC to earn it. Now. <clears throat> having said that, excuse me, having said that, you look at their top, you know, if you look at the who's who are going to be the best teams in the Big Ten this year, Ohio State certainly, USC certainly, Oregon certainly, who knows with Washington, that's all in flux, massive talent change. Right. But I would think those three certainly are going to be amongst the elite teams in the Big Ten. 100%. No doubt about it. Yeah. They're going to be in the top 14. Right. Notre Dame, Notre Dame every year is top, essentially every year is top 14, usually top 10. They have the anomaly year like this year. Didn't they finish 14th? I think I believe so. Yeah. Like they have the anomaly year where they're not ranked or, you know, Marcus Freeman forgot to take his shoes off. So we couldn't count past 10 on the goal line. OK, <laughs> you know, that stuff happens. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah. What's the problem? fire is that? Oh, wait, yeah. we don't fire coaches anymore. Oh, but Notre Dame doesn't belong in an automatic qualifier spot. Yeah. I I, I don't. I, I want to see him win a national championship before I'm dead. Probably won't happen. Probably not. Probably but not. I, I want to see him do that. But I also would very much like to see Notre Dame join the Big Ten because it's a pushover league. It's a, it's an easy, it's easy access to the college football playoff every single year. Yes. It's easy access. So I think you're looking at you're looking at something where you're every one of these moves, every revenue sharing, every modeling move, all this shit is all done to push down the G5. No question. I mean, keep, it's, it's restrictive behavior. That's I, what I it mean, is. That's all it is. Oh, by the way, how do you feel if you're Oregon State and Washington State this morning? Yeah, well, again, I should I, have merged <sighs> with the Mountain West. I am going to continue to. I got one for you. I'm going to continue to stand on business, stand on and, business, and say that that those two. You know, for better or for worse, kind of made their bed. Like everyone they wants did. to say they're victims and they had no control in the Pac-12. But what I'm here to say is that, again, there's no getting away from no matter who your school is, no matter what conference you're, you're in. If you're going to just be cavalier and not care about winning on the football field, you're going to be the one that gets the short end of the stick when things go sideways athletically. And that's what we're seeing with those two. And to me... Yeah, Oregon State, in my opinion, always deserved to get uh, to get access to the Big Twelve. I was, you know, I I was always in that camp, but ultimately, like that didn't work out, and now you're sitting in the wind. And by the way, I'm going to keep pointing it out because that's how much of a red eye I am. Still waiting for that six hundred million dollar check to those two. Still waiting. Yeah, Still waiting wild. for it to be issued. So that ain't coming. You're not getting into a power conference. It's not, Louie. And you, you're asking Hop in the portal to the Mountain West. I still think the point that I can't remember who made the point yesterday on the show, but can you imagine if the old Big Big 12 had stayed together? Mm -hmm. Colorado, Nebraska, AM, Missouri, yeah. Texas, Oklahoma. Be in a great spot. Where would this league be now? Where would that the 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 point that is so amazing to me? What if? The Pac-12 had taken teams from the Big 12 instead of USC going to the Big 10. Jesus, can you imagine that? Yeah. I, I, the, How different these conversations could be. 
how different they could be. I, I just am, I, I am amazed by it. And, and the, the outright travesty that is Oregon State and the perilous position that they are in. It's what happens when you go along for the ride in life or in sports. Mm-hmm. When you just are going along for the ride and you're letting somebody else drive the car, you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah. If we're if 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 you're in in this situation and you are watching college football change at the speed of light it seems like. You can't just sit around and hope or think that somebody's got your best interest at heart cuz they don't. Yeah. They don't and you just need to understand they don't. And it's it's remarkable to me. Yeah, and and I think that the the only other thing about the G5s that I would say is if you're a G5 right now are you not sitting here trying to win as much as possible because because you know that the power struggle is at some point going to show up. You know that you, at some point the G5 is going to have to fight. You had better. You had better do everything you can do to leverage NIL. Yeah. Because that's your path. And Nick Saban be damn. And I know that Ted Cruz had his little meeting and everybody wants everything. Oh, God. It is what it is. If I say it is. And, and it is yeah. NIL. Yeah. And it is the portal. And if you don't like it, and if the kids are only concerned about making money, well, then you better figure out how to make them money. And Nick, hey, I love you, dude. With all due respect, you shouldn't be coaching college football, Dabo Sweeney. You don't want to deal with that? Don't deal with it. Yeah. Chip Kelly, you don't want to be a head coach? Don't be a head coach. But if you're a head coach in this game, if you're an athletic director in this game, and this is what I say about Michigan, you couldn't win, figure out a way to win. And they did. That's what... I, I've never had the, 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 an issue with the spirit of I'm going to do everything I can do to win. If you are not out leveraging NIL right now, and I don't care if you are P- Poughkeepsie State University of Sewing Needle Manufacturing, figure out NIL. You got to figure it out because yeah. it's the only way that you're going to win. And if you're Boise, if you're Washington State, if you're Oregon State, if you're Cal, if you're UCLA and you're broke ass dead, You'd better figure out NIL. You had better go to Ford Motor Company and figure it out. You had better go to whoever your favorite whatever is. If if you're BYU or Utah, how your ass is not lobbying on Silicon Slopes every single day, I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. How you do not have an internship pipeline built at every one of these companies. How you do not have Weave, NIL, like... All of it. Yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. Because that's the only way you're going to stay relevant and win. That's it. That's the only way. All right. Let's get into your uh, comments here on the Monty what, Show. Where are, we at? where are we at on likes? We're, we're almost at 30 pass, so we need to be around 50. We're at 46. Okay. So if you're just tuning into the um, extravaganza this morning. Hey, Monty. It is free membership Friday. You know, every Friday we like to give away memberships on this show. You gift memberships, we give you Amazon gift cards. That's the formula on Fridays, and it is undefeated. Yes. it is. We gave away two $50 gift cards last Friday because we have people giving away tons of memberships. I love it. Hit the the gift membership button. Give away a membership. Everybody who gives away a membership will be entered to win. Uh, We get to 100 likes in the next 34 minutes, and we're at 56 right now. Go. There's no reason at this point, and we're 400 people into the show. There's no reason at this point in the next 33 and a half minutes that we can't add 44 likes. 100%. With 117 people watching. If by the the next the next 33 minutes, if by 6 a.m. Pacific, if by 9 a.m. Eastern, we are at 100 likes, we'll give away a $100 Amazon gift card. Boom. Instantly. So all you have to do. And if we get to 100 memberships given away in the next two hours, we'll give away a $100 Amazon gift card. Start giving them away. Let's go. That's how it is. All right. Let's uh, call them out. Zesty's Retro and Games, a member for 12 months. Let's go, baby. Yeah, how about uh, how about Hollywood going to the Chiefs? Did anybody see the text message that uh, Andrew sent to uh, Hollywood Brown? Andy Reid sent a text message. It said, Hollywood, think red today. KC red with diamonds. And signed it Andy Reid. To which Hollywood Brown said, yes, sir. Love the sound of that. Think Hollywood Brown. Lights, camera, action. Andy Reid is texting Hollywood Brown. Yeah. That's remarkable. I, I, I love the move. 
Uh, Matt Brand, a new member of the show. Go, baby. Pete Forte gives 10 Monty Show Let's go. Brandon Butler gives five Monty Show Let's members. go. 85 to go. That's 15. Thank you both for supporting the show. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Zesty. We appreciate that. We are at 70 likes. Come on, keep it going. Keep we it are going. at 70 likes. Stay hot. And if you're watching on Facebook and Twitter, all you need to do is come over to YouTube. Yeah, get your ass over here. Come over to YouTube. Just Google search The Monty Show. M-O-N-C-Y, The Monty Show. It all comes up. Just do it. That's all you have to do. I so, love that show. Appreciate all of you guys. Uh, let's see. Who's in this morning? Steven Smith, a member of the show. Steven, good to see you. Iowa State basketball. Now, Iowa State football, I think we all know. I think we all know. It's just, you know, they don't give up yards on the ground. Right, or per play. right, right. Uh, how are we all feeling about the Big 12 basketball tournament? Anybody see Houston absolutely dismantle TCU? I'm curious. Now that we're we're starting to get a, a picture of who's going where, Iowa State and Baylor. And I was pretty I was pretty impressed with is domination too strong of a word? The domination that Iowa State showed. Right. Beating K State. And Baylor, I actually thought, did not dominate against Cincinnati. That skyline chili was strong in them Bearcats. Yeah. So I, I'll be interested to see how the weekend plays. But right now we're Texas Tech in Houston uh, at 5 o'clock. Baylor, Iowa State uh, at 7.30. Yeah. And I'm going to be very interested to see how that plays. I love Iowa State's chance here. I think Iowa State's got a legitimate chance to win the Big 12 tournament. Um, what are your thoughts on March Madness? How do you think the Big 12 will do in the tournament? I think the Big 12 will do very well. Yeah, I think they'll do quite well. I think Houston is legitimately very good. I think they are very, very good. It is. I I just think this league is so deep. Yeah. This league is very, very deep. Yeah, it's hard to come out of the Big 12 tournament. No doubt about it. it, it. You're not kidding. You are not kidding. It is going to be. It's going to be very deep. James says, "Please hit the like button. I need more books." Okay, bro. You need more books. We need more more comments about stadiums. Uh, seventy eight likes now. Okay, we'll you guys were twenty two away. At a pace. Twenty two away. Hit the like button. We're twenty two away from giving you an Amazon gift card. Let's go. Yeah. What um, do you mean you need more <clears throat> books for your Kindle, bro? Please stop reading. Yeah, like, what are we doing? You read far too much. Yeah. Make more YouTube videos. Tweet me more YouTube videos. That's what I need in my life. Uh, C, uh, whoa, GFC Cougs. I'm sad my poor Cougs. Yes, we are victims. No, you're not. Cougs just missed the Pac-12 championship game for several years. Had Rose Bowls, too. (laughs) And then you hired Kirk Schultz. Oh, dude. <laughs> Kirk Schultz be damned, right? Uh, San Diego State, Glenn, good morning. Papers, please. You are only three of five of a program and do not have a soul. Why don't they just fast forward and stamp it as separate but damn well not equal? Okay. Bitter, mm-hmm. bitter party of one, bitter. Glenn coming in strong. <laughs> coming in strong. Shooter, Texas, good morning. Make sure that the conference champs get the bye week on the first round. That will make the conference championships worth it. Agreed. Totally agree. Agreed. Shooter, I think that's a great point. Agreed. I, but you cannot, and I am told again, and we'll see how all this plays out, but I think we've been telling you for weeks that the Big Ten and the SEC never – thought they were getting multiple bye weeks guaranteed that was that bargaining chip where they said oh yeah we'll throw this into the center fully knowing we're not getting it but then we can say well hey we acquiesced we didn't you know we we you know we negotiated we gave you the the bye weeks that's the only reason they did it yeah that is the only reason they did it uh og gary why not have bcs computers choose the two best because everyone hated that. And then we went to the college we, football we, playoff. We had that. And now Florida State's suing in case they can't win. Just yeah. saying. Yeah, we had that. 
Uh, Eric Wasikowski, when was the last time Notre Dame was consistent in the top 16 every year? When was the last time you didn't come into the comments section like a red ass in the morning? Yeah, I just think you you either you're just an asshole or you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Notre Dame has on a on a regular let's you want to just call it the last 10 years. Here's the here, how about 2010 forward? Not ranked in 2011, 420. Um 11, 11, 5, 12, 5, 8, 18, and 14. So what are you talking about? Consistently in the top 10. And then you go to, I mean, you go to, historically, they're always a top 10 team. Now, if they had stretches in the late 90s where they were dog crap, yeah, they did. But you get into the 2000s and they're, I mean, it's it's almost universal, they're top 14. Yeah. Uh, there's not even a... There's not even a conversation to be had about it. Tanner Plummer, it's not giving the G5 a chance. It's all about what the powers of college football are all about. That's true. Yep. Uh, Mike Smith, Beaver Power getting the shaft. Beaver Power. Mike, come on. Getting the shaft? Scock. Dude. Can't we go with something more humane like that Beaver's getting the shaft? Macaque. <laughs> Oh boy, Big Daddy Magic. Oh, okay, yeah, let's see. Who mm-hmm. ended a video the other day with FBY? He sends me yeah. videos every day. Yeah. Right? I mean, he is the official Monty Show ambassador. My guy sends me a video the other day that's well thought out, coherent. And he's like, Yeah, let's do this. And by the way, fuck BYU. <laughs> it's <just gone laughs> out of nowhere. What are we? Good to see you, Big Daddy Magic. Lucky Charms is a bigger brand than that sad Notre Dame. <laughs> they have been relevant since the Road Development Administration. Okay. The Road Development Administration? Not even all beloved royalty Victor could save Notre. Notre. Not not Notre Dame. Notre, Notre Dame. Notre. I mean, I'm Haven't almost like Notre Dame. It's been any good. They died with disco. Uh, okay. 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 I mean, you know, uh, James, I have to agree with Jake. Let's have a G5 four team playoff so they can have a championship. Well, okay, throw the fat kid a Twinkie. That's what you're essentially saying. Throw the fat kid a Twinkie, bro. That's what you guys are saying. Did you just call me fat? Have you looked in the mirror? Dude, come on. You have to be more respectful than that. Fat. Okay, throw the obese kid a Twinkie. I, I, I personally prefer Tubby. That's my preferred description. Tubby. Throw the tubby kid a bone. Okay. Uh, we are at 84 likes. Come on. We have 24 minutes to get 16 likes. We'll give away a $100 Amazon gift card. I want it. Do it. 24 minutes. Hit the like button. Let's go. Let's go. Hit the like button. Chad Carter, good morning. I have an announcement. <laughs> oh, God. I'll just play it ahead of time. Stay hard. It's caps. <laughs> it's caps lock Friday, bitches. Okay, uh, you know that's fine. I love that. That's hilarious, that's fine. dude. UW fan Jim gives away one month. Let's go, baby. That is sixteen. Only eighty-four more gifted memberships to go, and we will give away a hundred-dollar Amazon gift card. Um, you know, look, we're trying. We're trying on the show. Uh, James, Jake, I am not fat. I am pleasantly plump. Oh, pleasantly plump. Okay. The awkward guy says big bone. <laughs> Mr. Blutarski. Do you know? Oh, my God. You, what, what are you? Do you wait, 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 wait for this epic fail. Do you know Blutarski? No. What dude, movie is Blutarski? I have from? no idea. What if Blues I said? Brothers? What, oh, what if I said Jim um, Belushi? Uh... Yeah, sorry. That sounds like a surprise. You should say John Belushi and it's uh, Animal House. Okay, cool. Animal House. Cool, 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 cool. Mike says Husky. OG Gary says Twinkies are gas. No, I. what were the the red ones with the coconut shavings? Zingers. Oh, my God. Zingers were good. Oh, my God. Yeah, Zingers were straight gas, homie. But you see, there's two types of people in this world. And I'm guessing Wasikowski fits into this. Right. You're Literally. either a Twinkie Zinger guy or you're that asshole that eats snowballs. <laughs> I'm guessing. Now, I could be wrong. Wasikowski's a snowball guy. 
<laughs> anybody <laughs> prove me wrong prove me wrong oh money money me and jim harbaugh were sharing a pack of uh snowballs the other day and as soon as he pulled out i put it in yeah. it was amazing <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, deny it. I'm going to call you a liar. Laura Weiss, hello. Well, Weiss. here, I'll even, here, let me pull it out for you. There you go. I told you guys, it's one of those shows today. Pew, pew. Oh, bro. <laughs> so does the Big 12 or ACC get UConn and Gonzaga, Gonzaga to join? I think Gonzaga is joining the Big 12. Gonzaga. I think there's, there is, that's what I say. Uh, let's see, Sir Bob lob laws 0.0 well there is that uh and donuts ten dollars spring is springing may the golf gods look down Dude, on you bro 24 well 24 hours it'll be 5 39 arizona time uh 26 hours from now we tee off dude literally true north in scottsdale scottsdale hello yes we're coming for you and it's not going to be louis uh, James says, Toga, Toga, Toga. <laughs> Do you know where that's, where that's I'm guessing from? that's an Animal House reference. Dean Wormer is dead. Is a dead man. He's on a roll. The Germans bomb Pearl Harbor. Jake hasn't, he has no idea. He's never, he's never been impacted by, by Animal House. Sorry if you're offended by that. Do you mind if we dance with Joe Dates? <laughs> uh, Jeremiah Champion, I've been watching the Big 12 tournament. It is safe to say the state of Texas has a lot of good basketball teams, unless you're Texas. Yeah. Uh, correct. Correct. I think I think Texas Tech and Iowa State have looked really good. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. Iowa State looks prime, dude. Iowa State looks ready to rock and roll. And I... Mm, that's going to be fun. Uh, Brandon Butler going for that ho ho life. Dude, ho ho's. Okay. Your favorite, your favorite snack. Little Debbie, hostess. I mean, are we talking about Reese's egg? <laughs> Do you see the level of patience that I operate on? Yummy, yummy, yummy. Reese's eggs are a candy bar, dipshit. <laughs> anyway, not my point is, snack. your favorite? No, they're not. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Okay. My point is, what about those little, like, um, the sandwiches with the cream in the middle? Okay. Oatmeal pies. What about oatmeal pies? Because it's garbage. Oh, oatmeal pies are good. The sandwich with the cream in the middle, dude? Okay, we're not Seriously? talking. Leave your mom out of Seriously? this. My point is, my point is, little Debbie. I'm going to do that. Best little Debbie snack. <laughs> <laughs> grow up grow up <laughs> what is what is the best lil l-i-l lil, L -I -L, <laughs> lil, lil debbie hey lil money <laughs> what about little uh, and of course an instagram count from a porn provider comes up <laughs> should have known better cream fail bro uh lil oh, debbie dude. how about um Ooh, man, I should not have gone to Ooh, this the site. mini muffins the are mini gas. muffins the dude. mini blueberry muffins dude are are amazing that's an airport special i mm, little debbie um what is the best oh they're mini donuts yes yeah, spring mini donuts what are their what are their best what are their best snacks because they do the, the cakes have to be there the i think the cakes yeah. have to be there there's no doubt about it the snack bars oh, though oh my god you dude. guys nutty buddies are so good the wafer with the peanut butter. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That's pretty good, dude. But I'm telling you, I think that are we, what are we, are we ding dongs or ho hos? I'm probably team ding dongs. Okay. I've heard that about you. Yeah. Are we, are we zingers or are we Twinkies? Mm, that's tough, bro. dude. That's, that's tough. That's tough. Uh, yeah, Zinger Zingers were goaded snacks. Yes, they were. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They were. There's no yes to Swiss rolls. <laughs> Swiss rolls. That's yes. Nice. Yes. Oh, Swiss rolls. Sw Little Debbie grew up to be big Brenda. Yes, she did. 
that cellulite came in. So bam, 18 cellulite. Oh my God. Chocolate cupcakes. Yeah. Oh my God. Where you peel the chocolate frosting off the top of the cupcake and then you just throw the cupcake away. Cause you've, you've eaten the, the diabetic coma part of, you know? Yeah. Oh uh, that awkward guy, We well, I've been told I'm a hoe. I've heard that. Yeah. Lil Debbie's is G5-like, so you got to go hostess anything. Yeah. Oh. Mountain. No. Uh, Chips Ahoy. Original. Ooh, Chips Ahoy are good. Uh, Mountain Mama. J2H is Team Ding Dongs. Haha, we needed that as a sound drop. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Right? Uh, Cosmo Brownies are God tier. What were the... The Star Crunch. Oh, my God. Pull it up. What's Star Crunch? Star Crunch are, are so good, dude. Yeah, what's Star Crunch, bro? Oh, they are the chocolate. Um, It's like chocolate rice. You guys don't remember Little Debbie Star Crunch? No. I. I oh, my don't. God. I've never seen that before. Cri they're like Rice Krispies with caramel yeah, and chocolate. Is that like chocolate Rice Krispie treats? Oh, my God. Yeah. And, and it's like, dude, seriously. Stay hard. It is so good. It is so you, but and my mom used to. You get a box of them, and they're single wrapped inside. My God, my God, it is. I'm telling you, but the oatmeal cream pies, dude. I I actually had a lot of zebra cakes as a kid. Very good. Yeah. Zebra cakes are yeah. are very very yeah. good. Very very good. Honey buns. Huh, honey buns are okay. They, I mean, they were like they were mid, but they were also like you weren't going to skip them. Hostess you know? makes a better one. They that well, I I think it's called a honey bun. With the individual wrap on it. Oh, yeah. so good. Yeah. So good. How did this happen? Uh, so much better than a chocolate rice crispy. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, my God. We are Dude. 15 minutes out, and we only need three. Get the damn job done. Three more likes. Three more likes. That's all we need. Three to get I to 100. It. We're at about 700 views this morning. Three likes to give away a $100 Amazon cool, gift card. Uh the ding dong type foil covered cakes at Mod Pizza. Yeah, dude, the red velvet is gas, dude. How underrated gas. is Mod Pizza though? Like, it's it's pretty underrated because I feel like when we went there and then we discovered that that took it up another level. Yes, yes, I agree. I absolutely agree. It is ooh, ooh, so good, so so good. Uh, all right, Cody Hansen. For five dollars, with Utah not signing the ninety-nine year grant of rights, and with the uneven revenue distribution, will Utah move to the Big Ten in twenty twenty-six? I don't think so. I think that you are going to see Utah, and I, I continue to push this narrative, and I'm told how dumb I am every time I do it. Utah is, is one of the best athletic departments in the country. I think Taylor Randall's one of the best presidents in the country. The president of Utah. And I think they understand the route to making money in this game now is going to the college football playoff. Where do you have better access? Big 12. And now that you see, like Utah, the basketball program, both men's and women's, is significantly better than it's been at any time in probably the last five, seven years. Mm -hmm. You're performing at the top of the game in most of your sports at this point. I mean, you look at their stick and ball sports are performing very well. Um, I mean, I, I don't know how softball doesn't take a step back after going to the College World Series last year, but, but you're looking at high-level performances. Yeah. Like your ski team, obviously the Red Rocks. Like, why would you mess with that revenue machine? Because right now they're going to make significantly more money in the Big 12 than they ever made in the Pac-12. And I think major realignment will happen, but today you're going to get a TV contract. You're going to be put in a position because ESPN wants that deal done. It gives ESPN enormous leverage over the conversation. ESPN wants that deal done. And I think that deal is going to get done. Yeah. But I mean, Cody, it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility, but I don't see, I don't see that Utah wants instability. Utah understands that, that revenue generation comes on a nicely paved road. And I think in the Big 12, I, I still maintain they're the best football program in the Big 12 right now. I, and I'm not sure it's a conversation. Yeah. I'm truly not. And I I, I am not going to get fooled twice by Joey McGuire until he shows me. Show me. Because if Joey McGuire shows me, I will I will be all in on tech. Yeah. I will be all in on tech. And one name, Baron Morton, Taj Brooks, like I'm I'm 
Show me better defensive play calling that doesn't beat you in Wyoming. <laughs> Show me smarter offensive schematics that doesn't beat you throughout your season. Yeah. There's no more excuse with the quarterback. The quarterback either performs and stays healthy or Joey McGuire is not going to be here a year from now. End of story, right? This league needs Texas Tech to be very good. This league needs Mike Gundy to get off his ass and win a national championship. Desperately. But what are the chances that happens? Not good. Not good at all. Baylor didn't fire Dave Aranda. Didn't fire him. I could go back to Northwestern firing Pat Fitzgerald. Absolutely the right thing to do. Now, obviously, he had penis car wash gate. You could have fought through that. No, they didn't. They fired him. And yeah. had a, a really strong finish to the season. I look at, it's why Michigan's going to suffer. There's always unintended consequences of begging Jim Harbaugh to be your head coach. Right. I look at Minnesota. You should have fired your asshole head coach. You didn't. You didn't, right? But then I look at the cream of the crop in the pack in the uh, Big Ten. I look at Ohio State. Lloyd Carr be damned. It wasn't good enough. Oh, we lost Bill O'Brien. Yeah, let's let's. What are we gonna do? Let's go get Kimmy Johnson from Wachahatchee. You know, You're fucking Cole Beasley as our offensive coordinator. Oh no, how about Chip Kelly? How about we hired one of the best offensive minds in all of football, Chip Kelly? Yeah. Don't like him as a head coach. Neither do I. Offensive coordinator, yes, please. Yeah, let's do that. Think about it. Yeah. Why did Baylor not fire Dave Miranda? Well, it's a basketball school now. Plain and simple. Good, not great basketball team this year. You didn't fire Dave Miranda. Nope. Damn. See what I'm saying? Like, it's not accidental that teams are bad. If Joey McGuire does not win this year, and when I say win, if he does not compete for a college football playoff spot, I would replace him. Thanks. If Dave Aranda can't can't win 10 games this year, I would I would have fired him last year. I would fire Dave Aranda. And I'm talking about midseason. If you're if you're two and four, you're out. See ya, dude. Like, I love you. I, you know, we'll we'll provide you as part of your severance. We're gonna provide you like a head blade so that you can consistently be bald. Other than that, get the f out. Like, what are we hanging on to in, in Waco? Nothing. Nothing. Sonny Dykes, this is an incredibly important year for you. Houston, you fired you fired Dana. This is an incredibly important year for you. BYU, Kalani, you need to win six, seven games. It's an incredibly important year for you. The Big 12 is going to get a hard lesson about just how good the Pac-12 was. Because you're bringing in Utah. They're, 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 they're better. They're bulletproof. Yeah. They're tested. They are better. They are tested. And you look at Colorado. Did Colorado sit on its hands? Oh, man, it was my first year. You know, we're just trying to figure some stuff out. Uh, no, they didn't. They actually went and locked off the bottom half of their shitty roster yeah. and replaced the offensive line and replaced the defensive line. And did you see, did you check the portal? Check the recruiting class? Yeah. Did they lose some? Absolutely. They're three to one on what they lost to gain. They they have gained far more than they have lost. Yeah, Shador Sanders working out with with guys who are going to the draft this year in Miami. Pretty yeah, good. Not 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 messing around, dude. Pretty good. Uh, Eric Wasikowski, I hate coconut, but the taste is consistent. I love coconut. Yeah, well, taste is all that matters for you, so you know. I love coconut. Yeah, I mean, what is what is Jim Harbaugh's ass taste like? Yeah, I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> Come on, I'm dude. Q genus. Monty is a child. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Have we All crossed right. it? Over 100 likes. Have we crossed yet? Where are we at? Uh, we've had 750 views and 109 likes. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. We gave you an hour and you got it done in 52 minutes. All right. Start the nominations. Who's getting the Who's getting the gift card? Oak State James needs new books. Don't give it to him because he shouldn't be reading. He should be making video content. Agreed. Okay. Uh, somebody go smash his his little Kindle thing and stuff. Now, admittedly, Mountain Mama has been here first pretty much the entire week, so I think Mountain Mama's got to be on there, right? Mike Smith absolutely has to be on there. Um, I think the fact that uh, our guy San Diego State Glenn's not a member. 
Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. We've been given memberships away. How are you not a member, bro? Big Daddy Magic is here every single day. BYU winning six games exchange you a better chance of seeing Donald Trump, Joe Biden have tea together. Big Daddy Magic, the heavy set one with the big gun. Big Daddy. With the sweet tongue. <laughs> big Daddy Magic needs a new Victor jersey. Need is a little strong. Needs dude. a little strong. <laughs> I just stepped on a scorpion this morning. Can I please have the Amazon gift card to make things uh, even better today? With a barefoot? To make or things with your, even. With your boot or what? I mean, listen, is it our fault? that? I mean, if I give you the $100 Amazon gift card, do you, do you promise to go find one of those infrared flashlights so you can see the scorpion? Have you guys ever done that? So much fun. They're gnarly, it's though. Houston. Uh, BDM killing it this morning. LOL. Big daddy. Do we get big, big daddy magic? I mean, it's possible. Mike chase. I'm here every day. I can use it. All right. Mike chase. It's yours. DM Jake. There you go. See, it was that easy. Damn. It was that easy. That's right. Mike chase who, <laughs> you know why Mike chase is getting the, the hundred dollar Amazon gift card? Because one, from what I understand, Mike chase is incapable of reading. Uh, I don't know if my, I'm sure he can read, I, you know, you know, I, I'm kidding. Mike, uh, Mike's got, Mike's got a, a big family. Him and his wife have big hearts. They came to our birthday celebration last year as did big daddy magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Mike chase came to our birthday party last year, like salt of the earth guy has supported the show for years and takes great care of his kids, works really hard. His name is, and I'm not kidding. I am not making this up and Mike back me up on this. It's actually Mikel. Yeah. But people don't pronounce it correctly, so he goes by Mike. Yeah, people were rolling out Michael. Mikkel, DM Jake, you just won yourself a $100 Amazon gift do card. It. Do it. Right there. Do it. Don't take, a week. Jake. don't take a week like some of these other mooks out here to, yeah. to DM me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The Scorpion King. Yeah, your new name. Your shooter, your new name <laughs> is the Scorpion King. Shooter text, in, it was inside my boot. Dude, when we lived in Arizona, I routinely used to shake my shoes out because I never stepped on one, but I came close. The, we built a home in Phoenix. The first night we slept in the house and we had this huge master suite of a bathroom. And in the middle of the tile floor, when, when nighttime P guy and I had our meeting, I almost stepped right on a scorpion. That was, that was terrible. Nah, dude. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. Tom Dean, give it to the person who gifted the most memberships this week. Well, we haven't gotten to 100 memberships this week. Um, get to 100 memberships, and certainly I will do that. Tom, that's a great idea. We did that last week, pretty much. Maury has submitted. I know we've already picked a winner. Maury has submitted a video. Of what? Of his daughter asking us for the gift card. Okay. Okay. Mike Smith, got to shake those boots out, and it also wise to put them on a shelf or off the floor. It is. I had all my shoes in my shoe closet up on a, a shelf for that exact reason. Sir Bob Lodz, there's no such thing as moops. You mean moops? I sent a video entry for the Amazon card. See, we got people trained on this, man. Yeah, he, James? I sent, if you send me a, a... There it is. Okay, first of all, that's not a video entry. Need books. That's a screenshot. Where's, uh, where's James it? with his Kindle. And I appreciate that you read, dude. Uh, what no phone number? What whoa, what happened here? Yeah, no phone number this time. Exactly right. You can find me on Twitter, the Monty Show, M O N T Y the Monty Show. Uh, James needs books. Dude, James is first team all Kindle, bro. He is first team all Kindle. You guys, amazing job on the like machine today. Let's get rolling on the gifted memberships. Um we've given away one 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 hundred dollar Amazon gift card. How many memberships do we have today? 10, 15. Uh, 16. How about 21? Because Maury Alvarez just gave us five. Let's go. Let's go. How is that not the first drop on the first page? Because I, it doesn't matter what page I'm on, and I'm still going to have to go to a different uh, page. Maury, appreciate you. Hope life is good in Florida. Uh, good morning to you, my friends. Uh, our number two of the Monty Show, as always, is presented by our good friends at Big O Tires and American Fork. Great conversation with Jake Retzloff yesterday talking about. Uh, the QB competition going well at BYU. If you did not see it, it is on the channel. Please support Big O Tires and American Fork. Find them on Instagram. Find them on Facebook. Leave a comment on their post that says, thank you for supporting the Monty Show.
I'm asking you to do that right now. Go find it. Big O Tire, small business owner. They're not some big corporate star, Monty. They are franchises. Every one of those Big O Tires you see around Utah, that's a single business owner that is working hard to provide for his family and get back to the community. Ryan at Big O Tires in American Fork does it better than nobody else. Make sure you go see him. Anything for your car, obviously tires, obviously lifts, alignments, tune-ups, transmission, window tint, uh, paint sealer, paint protector. Did you guys know in, in Utah, you cannot buy an insurance policy to cover your window, your windshield? So annoying. And in, in Arizona, we would do each one of our cars. We probably had two windows a year. In Utah, they will not sell you the policy because it is too expensive for the insurance company because we go through so many windshields here. It's wild. Big O Tires in American Fork. Uh, kicks off hour number two of the Monty Show. Mike Smith, Big O Tire, repping the small business owner and America. Exactly right. Exactly right. Exactly right. More bowling talk, please. Okay. Who do you think you are? I am. Um, Stepanek, good morning to you. Eric Wasikowski, they didn't get the reference. What reference? What reference are we talking about? Yeah, what about? reference is that, dude? I don't know what you mean. Q Sam in the house this morning. How about them Arlington Bears? Dude. Let's get into the NFL a little bit here on the Monty Show because, and I, this is hard for me to talk about. It's hard for me to say uh, the Chicago Bears have a plan. And last night, it was almost as though I had an a, 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 an existential moment in my soul of Chicago Bears fandom. Because you know on this show I've railed that Justin Fields isn't the problem. Right. I've told you that Ryan Poles, the general manager, Kevin Warren, the defensive coordinator who's our head coach. I won't say his name until we win a game. I just won't. <laughs> but those are the problems in Chicago. Luke Getze was the problem in Chicago. Yeah. Well, apparently that's not the case anymore because the Chicago Bears made a move yesterday that I think is an indicator of the future direction of this team. <clears throat> They traded for Keenan Allen from the San Diego, Los Angeles. We rent space at the Rams house chargers. <laughs> and why is this significant? This is significant because the Chicago bears also got Gerald Everett late of the not in San Diego anymore chargers. They added Deandre Swift. What is Deandre Swift? When he's healthy, one of the most prolific leak out backs in the NFL. You can throw him the football. Gerald Everett is an elite seven to 10 yard route runner. Keenan Allen is one of the most high production underneath route wide receivers in the NFL last year. Go look at the numbers. Go look at the production. I think it was fourth in volume last year. They're building an offense in Chicago to fit the skill set of Justin Fields. You significantly bulked up your interior offensive line, which was the A-gap was an absolute sieve last year. It was horrendous for this football team. No doubt. The Chicago Bears. I pause. Monty. The Chicago Bears would seem to have a plan. And I have not been able to say that for many, many years. And it is amazing to me that Kevin Byard was brought in to run the back end of this defense. Solid move. But now you start to put all of this together. And it looks like, and again, I don't want to get crazy with it. Right. But it looks like the Chicago Bears have a plan. I love the Keenan <clears throat> Allen trade. Yeah, I, I think that that's a very pragmatic trade. I, I, I still... You know, I'm still wondering how this dynamic in the draft is going to work. 
right? So I totally agree. They're they're showing you, hey, like we have, you know, we have some semblance of a strategy. We understand that Justin Fields is not a deep ball thrower. Mm -hmm. This is an intermediate thrower who will run when when need be, and we should probably create some more design runs for him to utilize his athleticism. Um, so we're going to go out and we're going to add skill position talent to facilitate playing offense like that. But my question is, are you going to draft Caleb Williams or are you going to trade out and add another weapon through the draft? Because you're going to trade out. I, I have to think so, right? I mean, if you're going to add talent like this, that would suggest you're going to trade out and you're going to go out and you're going to get, you know, top end, whatever wide receiver, you know, maybe an over the top guy or, Whatever, whatever the case may be, right? I mean, uh, again, not not that I'm suggesting they're they're going to draft Xavier Worthy, but let's say you had Xavier Worthy as a weapon on your offense, in addition to Keenan Allen and these other guys you've added. That's where that's where I start to say, okay, you're you're going to win some games that way, right? You're not going to be a bottom of the barrel team anymore. You're probably going to be at least 500, maybe a game or two over 500 at that point, you know, because I'm still a big believer, even with all the talent. You still got to have a quarterback who knows how to change the play at the line of scrimmage and understand what the defense is trying to do to him. And if you don't have that, you can have all the talent in the world, but it's not going to mean anything. So that's a conundrum that the Chicago Bears find themselves in, where it's like, hey, is Justin Fields mentally capable of playing this game at the highest level? And I do think he is provided that mm. that you're not constantly, you know, because he complained about how much they were in his helmet. And then they stopped being in his Luke helmet Getzey, so much. Luke Getze, the former offensive coordinator of the Chicago Bears, mm -hmm. and talking to some friends of the program in Chicago, um, Luke Getze used to yell. He was a Luke Getze apparently was a loudspeaker in the helmet speaker, and he over over talked. He would send in sometimes three different play calls. But then before the play call would come in, there were times where he would be talking to him about, hey, watch this, and you got to see this, and you miss this, and uh, run zero two yz banana in your mom's butt. And then, you know, Jiminy Cricket 569Z off the left hash 26 red marker. And Justin Fields was, was quite literally saying, I didn't get any of that. And there were times, and we talked about it on the show, where he'd walk up to the line, and you would. There was one, there were one time in particular. He walked up to the line. You could see him break the huddle and just be like, and waved off, called a play, went up to the line, and it wasn't the, anything near what they put in. And it all, the hell, when did it hit the fan? When the play that Justin Fields called worked. That's when it hit the fan, and all of a sudden it was you stop doing that, and so Justin went to the media. And he said, you know what? I'm tired of it. They're talking in my headset too much. I just want to play football. And so what happened? Three days later, he apologized for saying that. But also what happened? Him and Luke Getze agreed, one play call, two play calls, shut your mouth. That's it. Stop filling my head with all this nonsense and just send the play in. And the sad part about that, and Jake Retzloff has talked about this on the show. Yeah. You know what the, the best part about having communication in the headset is? Hey, what you know, uh, safety off the backside is leaking to the hash, like, which is, hey, that's why I'm calling this play. Throw it there because the safety's leaking to the hash. Hey, he's leaning inside. Look him off, look off left, throw that, throw down the hash. Get DJ Moore. Like, yeah. That's what should happen. That's what happens around the Patrick Mahomes has talked about this with with their system. Matt Nagy, um, you know, when you're when the play is coming in and Andy Reid sends the play in, they're talking about design. Hey, we're changing or we're doing, or they have you watch, you watch Patrick Mahomes intently listen, and then you'll notice that he'll signal with his hands to communicate back and forth. That's the kind of communication you need. Yeah. You need Jason Kelsey, uh, or excuse me, Travis Kelsey, to be able to walk up to Andy Reid and scream at him and not have a nuclear meltdown. You don't have that in Chicago. Yeah, and I think that relationship gets talked about a lot. You know, the uh, across the league, not even just for the Bears. Like you, you look at the successful teams. Yes. And ninety nine percent of them have a phenomenal relationship between the quarterback and the head coach. And I look no further than Baltimore. Why is Baltimore struggling? 
in terms of winning a Super Bowl. Because the coaching staff does not believe in the quarterback. Yeah. And so you you get into these situations where where Lamar's prolific in the regular season and did pretty much the best quarterback in the league every week. And then in the postseason, they they are unable to get over the hump because they are not able to to you know do a good enough job in the passing game. And whether that is Lamar's limitations as a passer or communication or whatever the case may be you know, that's why they struggle. And so, yeah, you look at this Bears situation, it's like, hey, I love the fact that you're adding talent. I love the fact that we've come full circle and said that you're going to build a new building on the lakefront. I think that's proper. It it's is. what it should be. Like, I, I, to be honest with you, I hate that it's a dome because I think the winter snow game in Chicago every year is iconic at this point, but it is what it is, man. And I think that, that you know, you you look at Justin Fields and, and – you know, at some point he's either going to have a breakthrough or he's just not. And, yeah. and I, I, that's, this the hard is part. it. This is, this is his last and final, but I, I look at Shane Waldron and the thing that excites me about Shane Waldron, now the offensive coordinator of the bears is you can see that they are building a system to support Justin Fields. You look at what Waldron had done uh, in Seattle and you look at the offenses he was a part of, and you look at the way they use the quarterback, and you look at the development that we saw from Geno, you look at the multiple levels that they play out there, that's the offense that you need for Justin Fields. Yes. You cannot continuously tell him, look for DJ Moore running a go route. If that's not there, panic. That's the Bears' offense. If DJ's not open, hit the panic button. And stand in the pocket and hold the football, and nobody – holds the football more than Justin Fields does. I think he has the second longest time in the pocket. Yeah. He holds the football like 2.4 seconds. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And you have now Gerald Everett and Cole Komet. You may not know who Cole Komet is. He's one of the best pass catching tight ends in the NFL. Now you have a running back. And again, Swift is a good pickup, but my question is how healthy will he be? Mm -hmm. He is very good in the flat and he's very good on the chip and chip and turn right, which is exceptionally important in that offense. The, the, the Chicago Bears have a plan, and it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how all of this plays out uh, because I, I also think that Eric Washington, the defensive coordinator of the Bears, is very, very important, exceptionally important. And the defensive coordinator that's a head coach for the Bears, this is it. <laughs> I don't want any bullshit out of this team. Like, you are going in the right direction – and I look at what the potential for this number one pick is, and I, I would love to hear what you, what you guys think about it. But my my feeling is you need to trade that pick because you have number number one and number nine right now, I think it is, and you just traded your uh, a fourth round pick, right? Right. Yeah. You could easily trade that pick, pick up another first round pick or two, and pick replace that late round pick that you sent out to get Keenan Allen. So I, I think it makes all the sense in the world. Um, and I think you are also in a position where I think you have to find a way, hell or high water, you have to find a way to get the top end out of Justin Fields. You have to find a way. Because again, I will say, it's not his fault. Him being me mediocre is not his fault. He has not been developed. This organization... And if you want to go recent times, fucking Mitch Trubisky was a disaster. Yeah. Never developed, never built an offense, never built a coaching staff to support him. Disaster. Yes. So not only did you cut him loose, but then you did the exact same thing with Justin Fields. The exact same thing. And at some point, and how is it that all of us sitting over here can't can understand what all of those mooks sitting over there in the NFL front offices don't? If you're going to draft a player, build around that player, especially the quarterback. Whoever winds up, whoever winds up with Caleb Williams, and I think it's probably it's probably Washington, you had better have a plan in place not to draft him because the, the it's not that you can't draft quarterbacks. But you better have a plan in place to develop him. Yeah. To to facilitate what he does well, it's, I mean, I, it's the only thing I can think of as to why the great Brandon Whedon did not be, 
Hey, you Ma- Mason Rudo Randolph Rudo Roto Rooter did Kenny not small hands pick it. Did, you, you, I mean, <sighs> Mac can't get the job done. Mac Jones could get the job done. Bill Belichick couldn't get the job done. Um, you know, I'm just saying. I look at I look at projections. If you're gonna draft Jaden Daniels, you would better have a plan. And how you're going to produce Fettuccine Alfredo at that level. Where is the Italian? Because <laughs> he's a stick. He's... He, he, he needs who's, the, who's the highest weight. who's who's the highest rated wide receiver here on the draft board? Uh Marvin Harrison from Ohio State. Yeah, no so no like, question. If you trade it down and you wound up with Marvin Harrison, fine. And I think Malik Neighbors is going to be a better wide receiver. I, I that's me. I I'm not a, a Roma Dunze guy. Um, I think he'll be good, not great. And I look at like I look at Brock Bowers going to Cincinnati, currently projected at twelve. That would be savage. I think that's a that is a really big pickup. But if I'm the Chicago Bears, how am I not doing everything I can do to get Joe Alt? Uh, how am I not like he is clearly the best? I think Joe Alt is the best tackle in this draft. And I, you, you, you have done a really nice job in free agency shoring up your middle. I think, and with a guy like Justin that likes to hold the football, if you can't develop that out of him, you better be able to give him protection. Yeah. Because the other thing he's terrible at is feeling the rush. He's terrible at it. And I look at, I look at some of the guys. I like J.C. Latham. I think is going to be a very good tackle, but is he a top ten pick? I don't think he is. I don't think there's a tackle in this draft outside of Joe Alt that's a top 10 pick. So if I'm the Raiders, because there's a lot of thought the Raiders would like to move up. If I'm the Raiders, am I going to move up to take Caleb Williams? I don't know. If I'm the Chargers, look at the job the Chargers have done this offseason. You're shedding talent. You restructured the contact uh, contracts of Bosa and Khalil Mack. And you're you're getting your house of cards in order. What are they going to do in the draft? I think it is a, it's a huge question. My guess is that they're going to go offensive line. Mike, that's strictly a guess. And why wouldn't you? You're finally out from under Austin Eckler. You, you, you have done a really good job remaking this offense and opening up cap space. You, you better go offensive tackle. And I'm, I'm quite curious how all this plays out. Shouty. Good morning to you. Um, Sir Bob Lob Laws. His real name is Control Alt Delete. <laughs> I think he's going to be a hell of a wide, uh, hell of an offensive tackle. Yeah, I do. Uh, OG Gary Malik Neighbors is going to be the best wide receiver in the draft. I'm I'm serious. I'm serious. Finally, we agree on. See, like man, now uh, again, you just feel good, dude. Now I feel like I almost feel like I the constipation's gone. I'm so bricked up right now. Like we agree. I think Malik Neighbors is gonna be a stud. Mountain Mama. Bears should trade down a tad. I agree. Get BPA, which would probably be offensive tackle or wide receiver. I how deep is the wide receiver for how deep is the first 10 picks, 15 picks at wide receiver? Is Marvin Harrison? Roma Dunze, um, Malik Neighbors, Brock Bowers. Are those guys surefire? Who's an all pro in that group? Brock Bowers, for sure. I'm curious because the the guy that you don't see at the top of these at the top of these these draft boards. I'm telling you to watch out for my guy Xavier Worthy from Texas. And and listen, he's proven me that whatever that was at the combine. <laughs> and I'm not talking about running. The interviews he did at the combine. This cat's ready to play in the NFL. Oh, by the way, he ran the fastest 40 time ever. Like I'm for in, real. in history. I'm for real. 40 fastest 40 time ever. Yeah. 4-2. Two one, dude. That's wild. And yet he's not. He's not up there. Like the fact that, and I, I don't dislike Brian Thomas. I'm taking Xavier Worthy over Brian Thomas every single day, every single day. 
And I look at some of these guys, like uh, you're, you have in a draft every year, you have teams that make mistakes at the quarterback position every single year. That there are more busts at quarterback than any other position yes. because of the money they make and how high they usually are drafted. Bo Nix is a bust waiting to happen. I'm telling you, I am terrified of Jaden Daniels. Terrified. I, I, how, Free Harbaugh is a guy like, how How does Free Harbaugh project to be a starting quarterback in this league? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, bro. I, I don't know how you watch his tape and you're like, yeah, wow, this is an NFL quarterback. And and then Big Penix energy is now dr- going to be 24 to 28, but only because he had the best combine of any quarterback. Like, are, are we out of our goddamn minds? Apparently. Are we out of our minds? Right? And I, I understand that quarterbacks are a risk, but you can't tell me that, am I, are we really, there he is, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Corners are always going to be first-round picks. He is probably, in my opinion, the most, well, Terry and Arnold's pretty good too. Man, their secondary was amazing. Yeah. Um, but are you really telling me you, you're the Denver Broncos and you feel like Bo Nix is the right pick? He's the savior, bro. I I don't like how are you not trading up. How are you not trading up? Are you telling me that like who's another one? If you look at Free Harbaugh is, is projected to go fifth to the Vikings now. You're replacing Kirk Cousins with Free Harbaugh. That's why you 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 what? Yeah, come on, man. Come on, man. Are you kidding me? Drake May. Now, I'm of the belief that Drake May is, I think he is the the probably the second best quarterback in this draft. Mm-hmm. I do think if Caleb Williams winds up in the right fit, Caleb Williams is going to be a Hall of Famer. But it's all about fit. If Drake May ends up in New England, I have real fears about that because I think that's about to become a terrible organization. Yeah. Terrible. It's got it written all over it. You... Man, I'm terrified if I'm Drake May that I'm going to New England. Terrified. And if I'm if I'm if I'm Caleb Williams, I'm hoping to get to Washington. Because here's the other question. If Washington bumps up to number one, it would almost certainly indicate the Bears are not taking a quarterback. How far? How far do Drake May and Jaden Daniels fall at that point? Yeah. Because if you're the Patriots at three, are you going to pick Jaden Daniels or Drake May? I think Drake May is going to be a far better quarterback. Okay, one of those two goes. Let's say that the Bears and the the Washington Football Club. Uh, let's project Caleb Williams goes number one. My guess is, my guess is, if your best player available, Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors goes number two to the Bears. Okay. Let's say number three then is the New England Patriots. Jaden Daniels or Drake May? I think they're taking Drake May. Probably. Probably. They can't take the risk that is Jaden Daniels. Right? I mean, I think the guy weighs 37 pounds. Seriously. I don't think you can take the risk. And and I think it is... I think that it's it's really a question of do you want a better thrower or a better runner, a more mobile quarterback? Because there's no doubt Jaden's better outside of the pocket than Drake May, but Drake May is by far a better thrower of the football. Drake May is that guy. And I don't I don't know how many people understand who Drake May is. I think Drake May played at North Carolina. And he's a football player, not a basketball player. Well, he was a phenomenal high school basketball player. Right. You guys understand he was supposed to go to Alabama, right? Like they had him done... He was going to be the next great quarterback at Alabama. And then Mac Brown, who has a relationship with him, and and Drake May, whose father was a prolific basketball player at, at North Carolina, uh-huh. stepped in, and he went to North Carolina. This kid is legit. Yeah. And he is th- one of the best throwing quarterbacks probably the last five years. Well, and I think the, the best quarterbacks coming out of the draft typically are underrated in college. You know, there's a lot of guys who – who have huge success in the league who maybe weren't, you know, the the A1 selection in the draft. Because I also think when you have the second highest cap hit in the entire NFL, 
with verticality in Arizona, you're not taking a quarterback. I think his cap hits $51 million. I, I, and I don't know why you would sign him to that deal. Oh, dude, my butthole just puckered. Like, bro, <laughs> like the pipe job is incredible. Kyler Murray's cap hit is $51 million. Scock. Like. <laughs> Macaque. Dude. So my guess is somebody's going to fall. Because the Arizona Cardinals are going to take the best wide receiver available to mm -hmm. them, even though they did just cut their left tackle. But they're going to take the best wide receiver available. Marvin Harrison is probably that guy. Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors goes four. And then I think at number five, now we start getting our tiddly winks in a bunch. Because the Vikings are. Winks. Yeah. I mean, I didn't want to say testicles, but, you know, it's a family show. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm not talking uh, about that. My point is the Minnesota Vikings are taking a quarterback. How, how do you not? Right? Jaron Hall was not a successful endeavor. Yeah. I, I think that the Vikings need somebody that can be there for 10 years. Uh, whoever falls, Jaden or Drake May winds up there. Then the Giants. Uh, and here's where it gets really interesting. Do the Giants draft and do everything they can do to support Daniel Jones? Or do you throw that do you throw that rabid cat out the back window and lock it and it's over? Well, you already shipped out Saquon, right? But I thought Saquon shipped out himself. Yeah. I know he's dead to you and everything, but you know. Is Daniel Jones your guy or are you going to try and replace him? I'd be trying to replace him, but that's just me, man. I think it's interesting. That is something that I think you got to really pay attention to because I do think it is a it is a much tougher road to hoe when we're talking about where to go here. But, I mean, the rest of the first round, Bears are at nine. I think the Bears potentially, and I say potentially, the Bears could have three first-round picks. And we'll we'll see what that looks like. But you look at the rest of this first round. If if the Kansas City Chiefs do in fact end up with Keon Coleman from Florida dude, State, you're it's over. Like it, it's over. That could be. You, dude, Buddy is a big play wide receiver. He has a, a knack for it. it. He's got that trade in him. And I'm telling you, you put Keon Coleman on the same field as Patrick Mahomes. You've got big, big problems. And you're telling me, you're telling me Hollywood's on the other side. Mm. You've got problems, bro. And I'm curious if uh, Kingsley Suamataia lasts into the 20s. Because I also think that the Seattle Seahawks at 20, that's an interesting spot. I think that the, the Steelers at 16, although there are probably better prospects than Kingsley Suamataia at 16. Right. But I think there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to prognosticate on. Yeah, I think it is really going to it's going to be interesting. Uh, let's see, Steve Stepanek. Hello, Bo Jackson ran a faster forty yard dash. Xavier Worthy had never mind. <laughs> Why there, do we do this? There's always oh, well, Caitlin Clark doesn't have the all time scoring record. Yeah, actually, she does. <laughs> <laughs> OG Gary. Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, Roma Dunze, and Franklin from Oregon is also solid. Bowers is generational, all amazing dudes. Xavier Worthy. Hmm. Uh, San Diego State, a tight end is uh, a QB's best friend. Right now they are. And Brock Bowers. <laughs> Georgia probably beats Bama if he never gets hurt. But it's football, and football hurts. OG Gary. The name Kool-Aid alone is enough to draft him. You know, homie's going to be hard. Yes. Right? Stay hard. Were you, it, it, were you, were you red Kool-Aid or purple Kool-Aid as a kid? Because I'm on team purple. All I remember is my mom finally let me make a pitcher of Kool-Aid on my own. And I spilled that <laughs> motherfucker all over the world. So you don't, you, you don't. You, well, I was so stupid. I was a stupid kid. I filled up the, I will never forget this. Oh my God. <laughs> I put the pitcher in the sink, filled it up, just turned on the water. 
And I remember we had this bowl, this green bowl that was like, it was glass and it had like, you know, like they can mold them with like grapes on yeah. the outside of the bowl yeah. with see-through glass green with grapes on it, made it easier to hold. So I thought, okay, well, I'll pour the entire bag of sugar with what? three or four packets of Kool-Aid, red Kool-Aid, because all of us bros. The Stay entire home. bag? Dude, the entire bag of sugar. And and it, it, I don't remember how many, but Kool-Aid used to come in these little packets. Yeah. And my mom would buy the box. So there would be like 10 packets in a box or whatever. I want to say I put like three, four packets in there. And I just remember I was on a wood chair. I'm not kneeling on a wood chair on the counter with this green bowl. And I was like, would it be easier to pour the water into the bowl or the bowl into the water? <laughs> <laughs> Let's pour the pitcher, even it though it needs to end up in the pitcher. Smart guy here. Let's take the pitcher <laughs> and pour it into the bowl. Hey, you know what so they say. It was a plastic pitcher. You know, like the when you were a kid, you had yeah. those. It was wet because, of course, the water was just overflowing. And I just left the spigot on, the, the faucet on. And so it was overly filling, which I still do to this day. And Mrs. Monty hates that. <laughs> <laughs> so the plastic pitcher's wet. So I pick it up like this. I remember it being the size of a drum of oil. But I pick it up like this. And I go to pour it onto the bowl. And I think I got about right here. And it just spilled everywhere. And the bowl wound up... All over the stove. We had one of those stoves. It was like an electric top stove. All Did over the counter. The all yes, like a, all uh, over the and there were we had we had those little aluminum things you put under the burner. All over the stove, all over the damn. counter, all over the floor, all over my clothes. And all of it went into the bowl first, pushed the bowl so there was sugar and shit oh all my of my mom God. was so mad. Cause she was just in the next room. But you know what? I'll never forget. I will never forget running out of that kitchen, getting a towel out of our bathroom to save the shag carpeting. I saved the shag carpeting. <laughs> My mom took out a belt like there was no fucking tomorrow. Dude. <laughs> that was drop not that motherfucker. I think Kool-Aid, I think, falls to Detroit. No, it falls on the kitchen floor. <laughs> That's where it falls. My God. Uh, little Timmy creating Kool-Aid bucked up. I tried. That's right. That's right. Purple Kool-Aid, 1A, and watermelon. Oh, watermelon Kool-Aid. Yeah, I was always the purple Kool-Aid, man. That was always my favorite. Do you guys remember the orgasm you had when your mom first gave you, hand, put in your hand, a Capri Sun? Daddy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I remember the first... It probably wasn't the first, but as a kid, I remember being really excited about those clear plastic bottles of juice. Yeah. That you could squeeze. Yes. And like you just, ah, yeah, Mia Khalifa. Ah, like, and you would just <laughs> take it all, bitch. Like, all of it. It's Friday. I can. Hmm. <laughs> I would like to apologize to absolutely no one. Fucking A. Trying to make Kool-Aid using <laughs> pixel sticks never tasted Dude. as good. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. If your favorite Kool-Aid isn't red Kool-Aid, you're probably uh, <laughs> desecrate <laughs> national parks. Probably. How You are grape everything. Yeah, I love grape, dude. Including jelly. Oh, grape but, jelly. But they're, dude, Raspberry jelly is better, dude. But. A good strawberry PB and J though is so oh, tough to beat. It is PB like, and J. Oh no. my god, I would be fat. Not that I'm not now, but I would be way fat or obese guy if my wife was not like. Hmm. She made last night. You want to know who I'm married to? Hey, Monty. Do you want to know what a demon Mrs. Monty is? A demon. This gal. So yesterday she passes her Six Sigma yellow belt. Is this, that like karate? Or? This broad's unbelievable, right? Like <laughs> this broad. She comes fucking downstairs and she's like, I fucking failed. <laughs> so she's got she works for a big tech company and and she wants to be Six Sigma certified. Yeah. Which is a bunch of math and statistics. Fuck that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> um 
She comes downstairs all pissed off she failed. Too bad. So we're like, okay, well, why don't you go outside? Honey, here's honey. here's a Capri Sun. Why don't honey. you go outside and give yourself a, <laughs> ah, right? Like, we're all thinking, okay, just relax. It's fine. Yeah. We all know you're not smart. It's okay, fine. Okay, yeah, all right. I uh-huh. even joke. Ways in opposition. Here's the asshole I am. I even made a joke about her small female brain. Okay. Like, we were all trying to laugh about it. Not only did she not go outside, she went right back upstairs and passed the test. Retook it like 10 minutes Uncle later. Real. Pass the test. Real. So not only does this broad yeah. get her Six Sigma yellow belt yesterday, but then she proceeds to make me chicken tender tacos for dinner last night. Y'all want to play. Bro, chicken tendy tacos? So you know those naked or whatever yes, they're called? The green bag. Yes, the chicken nugget Dude, tender they're things. they're so good, bro. They're amazing. Next level. She makes She makes those in the air fryer. She makes tortillas. She slices up tomatoes and red onion and she slices or she washes and cuts some bib lettuce. We had the best dinner ever. And the barbecue sauce I have upstairs right now, I can't never remember. Stubbs. Hello, Mr. Stubbs. So she whips out her stubs, right? And you you put the the tortilla, the The bib lettuce, the tomatoes, the onion, the chicky tendies, the chicky tendies, put some stubs on top of that, and you shove that thing down your gullet, <laughs> and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I, I still haven't gotten over the Mia Khalifa reference. That 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 was pretty amazing. That was that's an all time moment on the show. That just happened. It's what I do. Yeah, I know. Anyway, it was so good. You had me until you said red onions. Oh, dude, dude, raw red onion is phenomenal. So bro. good. It's so good. Naked tendies and ramen. With some Japanese barbecue sauce. Oh, my God. My wife is a connoisseur of cooking right now. Uh, Tanner Plummer, I want a Capri Sun now. Well, you're a child. Yeah. Have your mom change your diaper, and then she'll give you a Capri Sun. You know. She'll give you a handful of ginger snaps, too. Who remembers ginger snaps? They're so good. Uh, Did you make her feel better, Monty? I did. We were all laughing about it. Six Sigma is nothing to play around with. It is so difficult. It's one of those things where the questions are like, okay, well, little Jenny filled up her cart and she was walking around the warehouse and she dropped 13 items out of the cart. How inefficient was that bitch? Why don't you fuck off? Right? Like, (laughs) no, I don't care how inefficient she was. When you drop stuff out of the cart, Jenny, pick it up and put it in there and then you'll be more efficient. Yeah. Like it's these stupid equations of, okay, there's a bullet train traveling from Istanbul to Mia Khalifa's house. Now, Oak St. James is in Monocopter 69 flying along with the bullet train, but he's only got one one kilo of gas left. Okay, I'm getting BMW app notifications. Oh, Jesus. Okay, what is the app saying now? Um, oh, hey, Monty, drive the car. Let's see. BMW X Drive added to your... M- My car is currently at the dealership. Oh. So it, it's not. it's not really... I the whole can that. I just tell you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I, I this shit with programming. I love my BMW. We just got it. <clears throat> I love Mrs. Monty's BMW. <laughs> <laughs> I love the BMW. It's got the it's got the Recaro style racing seats in it, the buckets. It's got yeah. It's impossible to use. I just want to turn it on, and I want it to go zoom zoom. Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't know anything about zoom zoom. What I'd also like is not to have to be a Six Sigma black belt to program the fucking (laughs) phone. Like, I just want the phone to work with the car. And I know. (laughs) Bonnie, please. It's crazy. There's no way to program my garage door opener into the BMW. What? What? Why? It's not on the mirror? No, because it's a $60,000 car. That's why. Why would you put it? I just want to hit the button so the garage door goes up and down. You, there's got to be. No, dude. there's not. They said they no, there's not. there's not. Yes. There's no way to put your garage door opener in the, the 2024 brand new X2M BMW. No way to do it. $60,000 car. You can't program a fucking garage door opener. 
doesn't okay. make you feel responsible. Now, again, I know Monty, we're... Monty. Mo Monty? Hey, Monty. Hey, Monty, let's not get crazy. Pause, bro. Pause. <laughs> when I get in my 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee, I can hit a button. It puts my seat where I want it to be. Boom. Out of here. Do you know that when you create a profile in the BMW app, control your car from Istanbul? Ow! Do you know that unless the phone is now in the, I watched a YouTube video. My phone always has to be in my car if I want my seat to be in the position I programmed it in. You know, there's a save one and two button on the door. I should be able to hit the two. Let's get crazy. I should be able to hit the two and it goes back to the two position. $60,000 BMW. I should be able to hit the two. And it should go back to the position I programmed it to. No, because your phone's not in the car. I'm driving to pick up the club that I broke last weekend at the fucking PGA <laughs> store yesterday. I forgot my phone. God forbid when you forget your phone, you can't use your own your own profile. Because if the phone's not in the car, which is technically Monty. the key. Money. <clears throat> okay. There you go. Eric, you're a racist and I can't read that comment. Um, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> racist jesus and and you, youtube is asking me if i want to filter this comment okay and i probably should remove that comment because you're better than that eric yeah. so i'm going to remove that comment that you got to be better than that dude that's not funny uh monty and people in hell want ice water 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 water, water ice uh lexus best choice of cars the BM, it's a beautiful car. And it's once I learn to use it, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah. Do you know how difficult it is to just save your favorite stations on XM, Sir Sirius XM in that car? Well, and admittedly, though, in fairness to the Beamer, we had that problem on the Jeep, right? You remember on the Grand Cherokee? That was user error. Well, so yeah. is this probably, but that's not the point. Because in the Jeep Grand Cherokee, I have a Summit, which is the highest trim level they make. It's beautiful. V8, by the way. Um, you hit number two, it puts your mirrors, your seat, and your radio entertainment all in, in your saved mode. Yeah, it's easy to use. Uh, you know, Eric and Raleigh, God damn, Tim. Wait, which Eric? Not you, Eric. Eric Wasikowski yeah. said something that was not, not funny. Eric and Raleigh. Uh, on. maybe they, uh, don't have garages in Germany. I guess. Yeah, it does. I, guess. I, I have to say that's extremely surprising. I, I like, I don't know. Yes, Mike, I did. Monty forgets it. You want to know who I am? I am rolling down my uh, driveway yesterday. I'm like, you know, you don't have your phone with you. I don't. I only have about 40 minutes to get done what I need to get done, which actually took an hour because I went and hit some, dude. I'm not going to talk about it today. Um. And I'm like, you don't have your phone with you as I get further and further away from the house, right? You don't have your phone with you. Hey, you don't have, you, you're going to go back? You, you, you're going to go back? No, let's just put it in sport mode. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what happened is I tried to put my profile in at a stoplight. So you have to be in park. So I'm sitting in a red light. I put it in park and it won't, it, it says the key for Tim's profile is not currently found. How did you not put it under Monty? <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous uh maybe don't buy a pos foreign car okay do it do explain me then yeah please what, what american car should i have bought that's comparable to a to an x2m i love this because i used to be wholeheartedly 100 percent american made i used to be a chevy guy well they stopped making cars they don't make cars they make suvs so you tell me what American car compares to an X2M? Because I can tell you Audi. I can tell you Benz. I can tell you five different Beamers. Um, Volvo. A Volvo, which is not American. So many people, well, Ford owns Volvo. No, it actually doesn't. It's a Japanese car now. Yeah. So please do tell. What Ford? What? Can't can't drive rear, rear wheel in, in Utah. So go ahead and tell me what American car I should have got. Got to have all-wheel drive. Got to have, you know. Come on, man. A Macan. Yeah, you're right. I should have bought a Macan. Fuck. Could have. I'm not. Good old German over engineering. Yeah. So frustrating. And I love the, don't get, you guys, I love that car. 
I love it. But it should not be this difficult. If I'm listening to a, uh, the, like Howard Stern yesterday, I'm trying to get to Howard Stern, Sirius XM Channel 100. I get there and there's no like, it's a fucking preset. I don't have pre. You got it. It's you've got to go through like yeah. again six sigma training just to figure out how to program the thing. Anyway. But it is pretty. It is. It is. Uh, Toyota. Ford Toyota is not American mid. No. Uh, heavily debating on stage twoing my S4. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm. T- you should get an SQ5, dude. Before you do that, the S. If you're gonna go in on an Audi, I would go in on an SQ5. Yeah. Any Northeast Ohio Boise State fan, you live in Utah. Why aren't you driving an F150? Because we're not pickup truck guys. You live in Ohio, bro. I have the best four-wheel drive vehicle I think that's probably available for snow. I got something that was fast and luxurious, and there's not a comp in the American market. I bought Jeep, which is not, it's Chrysler Fiat. It's not American. That's the other people. I drive a Jeep, dude. It's not American. Sorry. Sorry. It's not American is what it is. Uh, you need the new in, international scout coming out. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Brandon Butler, they already had a Wrangler and traded it in. They are dead to me. Tiki Barber. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> got full value for that Jeep though. Didn't I? Yes, I did. I, and you know, the problem is the comp at Ford is a Mustang. And I, you're not driving a Mustang in, in this weather. No, a Mustang's a secondary car. You're talking about garaging a Mustang for the winter. And I'm not doing that. And I bought an all-wheel drive X2M. And the technology is a real pain in my ass. That's what it comes down to. They give you a car, like a credit card to start your car with. It doesn't start the car. And maybe it's Bonnie old stupid dude. Probably has to get set up, you know. But he did. He sat there in the car and set it up. And I don't, I don't, you know. Yeah, I don't know how. What is this thing? Like, do you not? Do you guys not understand that Toyota is a Japanese brand? Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? What are you talking about? You know, Ryan at Big O Tires can help you out. He can. He can. He can. And will. And will. Uh, OG Gary Tundra is made in Texas. It doesn't matter where it's made. Where's the God? Fuck. You live in Michigan and you're advocating for Toyota. Idiot. Like, what are you doing? Where's the money going? Where's the money going? Oh, it's manufacturing. Where's the money going? Where's the... I know that's not. Yeah, it doesn't work with your narrative. Sometimes, like, see, this is where you lose me. Like, I'm fun to joke around. I like having fun with Michigan and even sometimes politics. But when you say stupid shit like it's made in Texas, like that somehow makes it better. How does that make it better? It doesn't. We've had deep discussions about it. Ford Explorer. I actually do like the Explorer, um, but the problem with I, the Explorer is is I he's already got Jeep, that. I have a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Yeah, we, we already have that. Yeah. I have a, a Jeep Grand I have a V8 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Yeah, really nice Grand Cherokee. The nicest you can get for the model I, year. I don't need a Ford Explorer. I, do, you, do you understand what an X2M is? Like, it is a, it should be, you should be talking about Cadillac. You know why you're not? Because you have no idea about Cadillac. Because nobody does. Yeah. And they're not reliable. That's the other problem. Like, do you understand that, like, maintenance, warranty? Like, I don't have to worry about any of that at BMW. Yeah, I believe. I I could be wrong. Uh, It just came out in the rankings earlier this year that BMW was the number one brand overall for, like, reliability and service and all that. And 61% value. Yeah. That's what I was after. Uh, Eric and Raleigh Monty, how about a Subaru? Hey, you know, not American, by the way. It's not American, but uh, but I I think you know what you know what it is, dude. You guys also have a certain level of car that you like. Yes, and you're not willing to be in a Subaru Correct. or a low end Ford. Correct. And look, I do like the app. It's cool to see where my car is sitting. Like I can see, I can see all that stuff, which is cool. I'm not trying to be, you know, but it's just it's really annoying to me 
that we can't just be like, oh yeah, hit a button and it'll save the station. Why do we why do we have to make it so that we we have some big thing where I it's just it's frustrating to me. I like their app. I don't hate their app at all. You know, like I I think you start getting in trouble when you're asking your phone to be present to start the car. Yes. I think that that's what the key's for. And I like, I am I'm just going to be honest with you. I like having a their the key fob for this car is amazing. I like having the key fob. Oh, you want to auto start the car? You got to do that in the app and you got to subscribe to do that in the app. They don't have it on the key. You do you know why we had to wait a day to have the car delivered cuz they they didn't have heated seats in the one that was in their showroom. Like it's just little stuff where I'm just like and I love European car. I love German specifically. I'm a huge Porsche Audi Beamer fan. But it makes me crazy that it's that it you have to have some kind of training. I'm not even joking with you. Yeah. You know, love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Yeah. The STI is not going anywhere. Northeast Ohio State Boise fan. Oh, Boise State North. He lives in Ohio. He likes Boise State. Just buy a used Chevy Cobalt. <laughs> I'll, okay, yeah. Guy. Tell me everything I need to know. Jesus Christ. Hey, Monty, why don't you go get a Dodge Dart, bro? What, an AMC Gremlin <laughs> didn't make your list? <laughs> Chevy Cobalt? Come on. A, she a Chevy Cobalt. Which I, lo I, I love. I love. I'm a Chevy guy. If I could get my hands on a 2021 Z06, I would have done that. Oh, that's right. I live in snowy climates where you can't drive it. So I'm a huge fan of the bow tie. And again, I, I need to keep saying this. It's not that you can't own those cars. It's that you, they're secondary cars. Yeah. They got to sit in your garage for a significant portion of the world of the, of the day. Yeah. So it's fine. Uh, where are we at on gifted memberships? I have not. I, I'm a terrible person. I apologize. Chrissy gifted 20 Monty show memberships. Let's go, baby. Let's go. All right. We have 10 minutes left. 20, 25 with Maury Alvarez, right? 26, 31, 41 gifted memberships. So we're 59 away. Do we, are we comfortable with the number 59? Do we want to, because usually it's a hundred dollars. Yeah. You got Amazon gift card. To hey, you got to the likes. You got to get to the gifted memberships, man. This is what it is. Business. Did Mikal DM you? He did. All right. I like it. Um, Thank you, Chrissy. Appreciate that. And everybody else who gave memberships today. Um, I'd love to give away another $100 Amazon gift card. Brandon Butler, owning a sports car in Utah is the equivalent of owning a motorcycle. It is. Unless you get an all-wheel drive. But again, I, I have to say. When it depends on where in the valley you live. If you live on the true. east bench, that's true. Yes, but, yes. But if yes, you live, if yes. you live where we live, you're only getting snow, like actual snow on the road conditions, three or four times a year. Yeah, where my I mean, house honestly, is out all that way, I I think it is. That's a very good point. You know, like I I just think that that I totally agree. It, you have to have all wheel drive in Utah. There's no to. question about it. It's a it is a prerequisite to live here. But I also am a big believer that that you can have you can have your rear wheel drive sports car here summers are getting longer here not shorter as long as you can garage it yeah yep. because the thing that drives me crazy that a lot of people do is they'll be they'll like have like i live in a neighborhood where there's anywhere between 2000 square feet worth of a house and 7000 square feet worth of a house and then my mfers with those three car garages will have it full of all kinds of trinkets and gadgets not called a car yeah. And their car will sit on the driveway or on the street. Don't don't buy a garage or if you're not going to garage it. Please don't don't don't. Uh I used to have a bicentennial Bronco. Never should have sold that baby. No, you shouldn't have. Uh X2M, aren't they smaller, less uglier uh brother of an X5M? Dude, the X5 is arguably the the best the best performance SUV ever made. Yeah. Yeah. And I, the new 2024, and may, I, I can see if I can find a picture of it. The new 2024 uh, X2M is, I love it. It yeah. is. Yeah. It's, performance what? is not the question. The looks are, yeah. You don't like the looks of it? I, it's, I like the prior generation of the X5. 
I but, do. But the, oh, the X5. Yeah, the X5. Yeah. The problem with the X2 is it was on it was on a car chassis. Yeah. Now it's not. It's on the same chassis as the X3. Let me see. Yeah, the I... X2 looks great. I I think the X2 is and it and it drives really well. I I, I think it, it it accomplishes everything that you want. I think that for uh, Mrs. Monty, it is more than enough car, no doubt about it, and I think that's great. I think that you know. To me, when I look at the X2, I look at it and I say it's a baby X6. They took the it X6, is. they took the X6 body, they shrunk it down, they updated some of the small stuff in terms of light light package and some of the lines on the car. Like the the kidney grills now have they're lighted. They have a, yeah. a, a it's really a cool feature. So you know, I I I like it. I I maintain that that um, you know, that sport back back look is slick. I, I think it looks really good in in on like the X6. Let's say, I think it's it, it it just has this this sort of beefy kind of presence about it, and I think that's what you want. And I think in the X2 as a as a small sporty crossover, it's great. I I, I think it's great. I I I will say I don't love that it it on a on a you know M line car. It's coming with Pirelli all seasons. I hate that. I think that's a yeah. that's a cost cutting thing out of BMW, but. You know, it is what it is. You know, I, I, uh, I'll say this, that car is fast enough where it deserves to have summer tires on it in the summer. That it, car is fast enough that they will not put a sunroof on it. Yeah. Because the, it torques enough yeah. that it will flex and crack a, a, a sunroof. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think it performance is not in question with that car. I, I think that a lot of manufacturers do it. I, I mean, whether it's Audi or BMW or whatever, even even Porsche, like, you know, the tech side of it just gets to be too much. So, you know, I think as you go along with the car, you'll get more comfortable with it and you'll learn it more. But uh, the X5M and the X3M are not to be questioned. I think they're beautiful SUVs. Yes. The performance is top of the line. Like anything like I, I'm and I could be wrong, but the X3M, I think, is 310 horsepower. Anything over 300 horsepower, you're motoring. Like there's, you, I just don't, I think it's very rare that you would need. Like, yeah, the, the M Sport model of the X3 is what you're talking about. The The top of the line M is 500 horsepower. Yes. Anything over 300 horsepower, you're, you're flying. And the thing that I like about my car, oh, excuse me. Mrs. Monty's new car. Yeah. Is that it's on rails. Like I love driving it. It's well, fun like to drive weekend, this weekend, right? We're, we're going down for a quick little Scottsdale jot to watch some baseball yep. renting an SQ eight just because, you know, I wanted to experience what that's like from Audi and that's a V eight, you know, 500 horsepower SUV. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting. Uh, Monty, have you ever owned a Benz? Been a while, but they used to be dang good cars. We contemplated it when I got my my 5 Series. Yeah. But I'm a Beamer guy. Yeah. The people that I know who own Benz, it's expensive to own a Benz. And listen, when you buy at the level that you're at with Beamer or Audi or Benz, you're talking about $2,000 in tires. You're talking about every wheel. If you bend a wheel, it's 1000 bucks. Yeah. They are, that's why you have to get maintenance. Oil changes on, on a premium European car are not $39.99 at Quick Lube. No. They're, they're upwards of three to 400 bucks just for a lube oil filter. Because you're not using, well, what viscosity? You're using full synthetic without, it's not a conversation, right? You're not, you're, you're doing your, your full maintenance is, you know, you know, 3000, like there's a break-in period. My wife didn't thought I was kidding. There's a break-in period for those motors. Yeah. You need, you really need a thousand miles in my opinion, but three to 500 miles, you'll break it in. Yeah. So you can't go pounding on it. Right. And as they get past that three to 500 mile mark, they open up even more. Like I would guess if it's 310 horsepower, I probably don't have access to anything more than 250 at the moment because yeah. it's going to rate limit you. Until it's broken in. It is. Uh, 220 horses more than you will ever need. Yeah, it depends on who you are. Uh, the new Dodge Hornet. What do you guys think of it? The Hornet's interesting. It's a good play from Dodge. It's smart. It is. It is. But th that's nothing more than the 
like the Beamer Supra swap. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of that going on. You guys know that the Toyota Supra is a, is on a BMW. It's essentially a BMW chassis and motor. Yeah, it's a two series. Yeah. Uh, Shooter Texas. Monty, have you ever owned a Ben? I read that one. Excuse me. OG Gary. Eric doesn't matter. Answer the question. The same logic says iPhones are Chinese phones. Toyota is a Japanese. Yeah. What are we even talking about? What are we even yeah, talking about? I would about? stop giving him life, dude. Yeah, I, I don't. I, why do we keep? Yeah, you're you're on the edge, dude. Yeah, like I, Eric, that this whole you choose violence every day, and it, it just gets. I'll be yeah. honest with you, it, it, it wears people out. Like you're ne- what you're, it, it, and I'm talking to Eric Wasikowski. What you're doing is not like funny, or you're just being a red ass, and it it wears people out. Yeah, and I'm not even talking about me. I just won't read your comment. But yeah. it just wear it. You wear people out because you do stuff like this every single day. It, just be normal once in a while, at least. Uh, thanks, Monty, for the gift card. I've been out of work for about a month. I pronounce my name Michael, but spell it Mikel, so no one gets it right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear you've been out of work, my man. Glad we could help you. Uh, LOL. What did I do now? Nothing, Tanner. Sean Gillette. Hey, Sean Gillette. How are Hello, you? Buddy. Uh, did you look at the Cadillac CT5? We did. Yeah, I Mrs. Just... Monty's a big Cadillac fan. That was one of that was one of the brands she on is. her list. She is. It is a it is a value position problem. I that's about four low 40s, high 30% after five years. So you're not going to be in an equity position. Yeah. That's the big, that is the number one thing. It's not a reliability or a technology or a performance issue. Yeah, that's a huge misnomer now about the Germans. The reliability piece is not a problem. No, it is. What is your car going to be worth when I go to trade it in in three years? That's, that's the whole conversation for me anyways. All right, we have to go. You guys will be back on Tuesday, uh, off on Monday for a travel day. We'll be back on Tuesday. Great week. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate everybody real quick who gave us memberships today. Um, appreciate everybody who hit the like button on the show today. If you have not, please do that. Um, 42 new members today. Go. Love you all. Could not do this show without you. The Monty Show is brought to you by The Advocates. Every single day, we tell you, The Advocates are the best injury attorneys in the business. They have a blood drive on Monday, 1 to 7 at their office in Murray. I'm giving blood on Monday. Can't wait to do it. Be there around 6. Let's do it together, man. 6 o'clock Monday. Let's do it together. Uh, blood, uh, redcrossblood.org. Sign up. Use the sponsor code Advocates SLC. No matter where you are, please go give blood this weekend in the name of the Advocates. Advocates SLC as your sponsor code. Until Tuesday, say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.